Good evening, everybody. I haven't done anything like this before, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit like, what am I doing in a bath, in a bookshop? Um, how have I written a cookbook? Amazing. Sorry, we're all on your side. Great, let's go with it. I like trucks. <laughs> I like food. This this could be this could be quite interesting. But it's Los Angeles, it's sunny, I'm sat on the beach. This is like So I didn't really think anything. I did think mm, interesting because people have said, why don't you open a restaurant? Why don't you open a bar? But it's like a hundred grand to just try to do a cafe and it's a massive risk. So Bally Malou teaches you massive risk. You know, that it's quite, you know, hard hitting as far as making money out of food goes. So that came back to England and around sort of Christmas time, I got a Ballymer news, newsletter sort of six months after I'd been in America and it said, new seminars this year, food trucks. And six months had passed, I googled food trucks in America and this whole street food scene had gone massive on the whole country, snowy places, cold places, rainy places, meatballs, you know, all sorts of different sorts of food. And I was like, okay, this is it, Jez, get off the pot, you know. And then <laughs> It's been a very stressful year, <laughs> but in a, in a in a in a really amazing way that every single thing from the word go was something new, and then I'd get through that, and then I'd go on to the next thing, and the next one would be a bit bigger, and then I'd go on to the next thing, and that would be a little bit bigger, and and each one's got a sleepless night before it, but then they get less, and, and suddenly, what's interesting is when you're out on the street or you're at an event, it's only your money that you're losing if you're not on time, you haven't got everything ready, you've not prepared, and once you, once you think that, you're like, oh, okay, I don't need to be too stressed because I'm the one that's losing out here. But then you start getting other jobs where you're being paid up front to deliver, and that changes the balance of everything. Then it's, it's a different sort of stress, so you need to deliver, you can't run out of food, people, you know, it's their wedding day, you need to be on form. So that's been interesting in its different guises of how the different jobs that come in. These guys here are my butchers, uh, and um, they said, but Jess, what we've got down here, mate, is um, we've got this burger press, and it's like you put your mix in the top, and it'll dollop out two 50 gram mini burgers. And I was like, oh, I mean, it's a bit automated, but then I've got to make them. And so, yeah, so, so now what I do, and do excuse me if you prefer me to do something like this. <laughs> but no, I take the mix and I drive down 45 minutes to the butcher at 6 o'clock in the morning because they work ridiculous hours and I don't want to get caught in traffic. And I would then, tr I would then, I'd have my bag of the ricotta and whatever was going in. I'd stand there, mix it all up, put it in this machine, and stand there. And take at this point, I take. I should have, I should be doing a meat puck business because little pucks <laughs> into trays, and then I'll take those up to the kitchen, and then I'll make them into balls, and then I'll tray bake them. Now that is in, still takes a long time, but the, I can, you can do about a thousand in about an hour, maybe less. So then, aha, so I did that for like six months, and then it was like, do you know what the time is taking me to drive down there, come back, go there, da da da. The problem is these machines are five thousand pounds, brand new. But I saw one for three thousand pounds, which is still a lot of money. But I'm thinking it's the only way to go. So I bought a three thousand pound burger press, which is now in the kitchen. So now I can go to the kitchen, the meat there, we mix it up, and and we're off. And children love meatballs. They love grassy vans, <laughs> and they love meatballs. And and that was an accident that was a really good thing to have happen. So go to sort of these amazing camping festivals and. Mummy wants nice meatballs, for, so that's worked quite well. In London, on the street food scene, it's it's twenty something people that, in my day, would be out in clubs raving. <laughs> and then now, so in November 2011, there's something called the Long Table, which was in a car park, in graffitied up East London, and it opened at six in the after, in the evening, and there were twenty traders in stalls and 2,000 people turned up for the first night. And they queued, by 6.30 it was one in, one out, like it used to be in the raving days. <laughs> um, and they'd just come down to eat food and talk, and the little guys playing an acoustic guitar, and that is what the youngsters are up to. So 20-something are just talking about food and going out and eating food, and, and that, so there's that audience. I mean, the week two, people were ringing me up saying, can I be on the guest list? And I'm like, 
it's a market, we're doing food, it's not a rave. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a rave. I was like, can you put me on the guest list? I'm like, can you put me on the guest list? You can't compete Meatball. with the sausages, you can't compete. You have to, see that's it. I can tell you, like, there are certain things, the Brits love fish and chips, hot dogs, and burgers. And so, there are certain things that are just going to sell better than others. And sausages is one. I wouldn't, wouldn't go head to head with the sausage man. <laughs> the publisher that I pitched the idea to, because I thought that was a strong idea and I could see, you know, it's fun, yeah. we can have a bit of fun with it, it could yeah. do quite well. Uh, was just really interested in the street food scene mm. and wanted to try and, because it takes a year to write a cookbook, like I said, so this is, she was quite visionary and she'd seen what the press that was building and she thought, actually, I'd rather have a bit of a street food story and this be an angle and meatball for me is something that translates. So in Manchester, they don't need to know who the bowler is because meatball might make someone pick it up and we'll make a beautiful book. And so that's how the book came along. Right. And I was like, okay. TV people, they love, they love, they love to sniff around anything that's hot, don't they? Yeah. So they, there's a lot of phone calls, but you, you go and chat to people and then they find out about what you're doing and then the hairy bikers will do it. <laughs> 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 Only when Saracens Rugby Club tell you that they're going to... Seriously, Jez, you come down here, we've got the new stadium opening. This was two weeks ago. We're going to do we're gonna, you, 250 covers. The problem you're going to have, Jez, is serving at half-time, 15 minutes. You've got to get it out there. It, it's going to be speed of service at that point. So you get properly amped. You bring in some staff. You get... So I do make a lot of meatballs, and I'm ready to roll with a lot of meatballs, and then it doesn't happen. There's no real half-time rush, you brought extra staff down, and that's the biggest, and it was only a few weeks ago, it was my biggest, that was waste then. So I went home, and the dog had a massive meal. <laughs> <laughs> I broke the balls back down into some sort of lasagna meatball offering to the wife, you know, who doesn't, you know, she's had a lot of meatballs. <laughs> <laughs>